Hello and welcome to another Coffee with Colum and thanks very much for tuning in. The objective behind this series of Coffees with Colum is whereby I take a snippet from my book Feeding Johnny How to Build a Business Despite the Roadblocks and explore a snippet over a cup of coffee for about five minutes or so on a weekly basis in the hopes that by me sharing my journey out there for you, my business journey, that it in fact will afford you a shortcut where back in the day I myself had none. The topic for this week I want to talk about is anything worth doing is worth doing badly. And so anything worth doing is worth doing badly. Of course, we're all trained to set to finish that sentence. Anything worth doing is worth doing well. And that is true. But everybody who does something well at some point had to start. And in most cases, certainly my case, pr probably yours, it started badly. And in my particular case, when I started my career, which is now almost four decades in existence, it sustained me for four decades. Um, I remember my very first day and I wanted to share a story with you that will, uh, I hope, inspire you to get out and try something new in 2017. When I left school in 1980, I wanted to be a school teacher. And the reason I wanted to be a school teacher wasn't about saving the world. It wasn't about teaching the next generation. Nothing laudable like that. In fact, it was simply because teachers had short hours and long holidays and uh, I set my sights on that. Anyway, I always said the man upstairs had a completely different plan and uh, as it happens when I came out of school in 1980 I didn't get the requisite number of points to get into teacher training college so my plan was very simple it was go get a job for a year study at night study Irish at night and uh, uh, start college the following year and you know become a school teacher uh, short hours long holidays happy days. That was the plan. So anyway, during the summer of 1980, uh, after I had done the Leaving Cert, I started looking for jobs. And one particular morning, I had a, an interview in BHS, British Home Stores on O'Connell Street. It's not there anymore. Had a, had an interview there uh, for the role of kitchen porter. Now, there's nothing against kitchen porters. Props to all the kitchen porters out there because it's a really tough, very important role. Anyway, I had this very formal, I remember it being a very formal interview for the role of kitchen porter. And I was quite intimidated. I was 17 at the time. Um, anyway, as luck would have it, I was offered the job and I was delighted with myself. I went straight from there across to Cleary's department store, which is also no longer there, but was opposite BHS on O'Connell Street. And I met my dad, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien is the best salesman in Ireland and he was selling for Green Isle Frozen Foods. And one of his clients was the Terrace Restaurant, third floor um, uh, in Cleary's department store. Um, when my dad arrived at the restaurant, he didn't see me, however, and he went into the back area, into the kitchens. So I went up to the guy on, on duty, looked like the duty manager, and explained that my dad was Tommy O'Brien. He'd gone in th th through that door and I needed to see him. So he whisked me through the door and all of a sudden I was in this tiny little office with three men. My dad, a chef, an impeccable chef in impeccable whites, and a big giant of a man uh, with r r rather protruding eyes. And his name was Stephen Halpin. And Stephen Halpin had a, was a big, large man and he boomed out. He said, well, what are you doing, young man, with yourself? And I said, uh, uh, well, I want to be a school teacher. I'm looking for a job for a year just across in BHS and I got a job as a kitchen porter and I looked at my dad and my dad, of course, was beaming. He was delighted. And uh, Stephen Halpin said to me the immortal words. He said, well, I have a cashier leaving on Saturday and you can start then if you wish. So all of a sudden I had a dilemma. I had two jobs within an hour. One was uh, the not so illustrious role as kitchen porter, but it paid £60 a week. And the other was a trainee cashier's role with Stephen Halpin. And he was offering me £40 a week, but he was willing to train me. So I went home and thought about it and decided that £40 a week to be trained in a less demanding role than kitchen porter was probably the role for me. So I took it. I arrived in my first day that Saturday morning and uh, got off the lift in Cleary's department store and was met by this very tall, thin man that I hadn't met before. And uh, he introduced himself as Kieran O'Brien. He was the restaurant manager. And I said, oh, my name is Colm O'Brien and I'm starting work here today. And he was, <laughs> he was understandably confused. Turns out he'd been on holiday and hadn't been there when Stephen Halpin offered me the job. So Kieran said to me, go sort the cutlery there and uh, I'll go make a phone call to Mr. Halpin. I was thinking, sort the cutlery, like what does that mean? I have no idea what sort the cutlery means, but I went to this tray, this, this large grey tray, and it had four wells, knives, forks, uh, spoons and teaspoons. And I sort of looked at them and thought, you know, the knives look fine and the forks are all a bit tangled up, but sure, that's what they do anyway. And the, uh, the spoons, well, some of them were pointing up and some of them were pointing down and some of them had round heads and some of them didn't. And teaspoons, sure, they were a bit, you know, teaspoons do what teaspoons do. And I sort of shook them around a bit, thought, that's grand, and I'll, I'll, I'll stand here now, cutlery sorted, and I'll wait for Kieran. <laughs> so Kieran comes back anyway, and he says, right, he says, uh, 
I now know what's going on. I've spoken to Mr. Halpin. That's great. He said, uh, welcome aboard. And he said, uh, I see you had no luck sorting the cutlery. <laughs> and I was thinking, hang on a sec. I spent about 10 minutes sorting that cutlery. What's the problem? Of course, I didn't say that. I just thought it. Anyway, Kieran then went to train me how to sort the cutlery. And what we did was we took a glass cloth and laid it on the counter. We took all the knives out and we started polishing them one by one. We cleaned out the well, of course, polished the knives one by one and put them back in. And all of a sudden they looked cleaner and brighter and were neater. We did the same with the forks and got them all cupped together. And again, they were immeasurably, immeasurably better when we had finished. Did the same with the soup spoons and the dessert spoons and the teaspoons. And then we polished the, uh, the, cut, the serviette containers at either end of this grey tray. And when we stepped back and we looked at it, it was definitely a better job. So my friend, anything worth doing is worth doing badly. That bad experience of me sorting cutlery, that first step that I took on the first day of my career has led to almost 40 years in an amazing career, an amazing journey to date. And what I encourage you to do as a good friend of mine, Bernard Dunn, the former uh, world champion boxer, says, uh, try something new. Don't be afraid to try something new. Because if you try something new, you'll decide whether or not you like it or you don't like it. If you decide that you like it, as I did in the catering industry, if you decide that you like it, you will get on in it. And if you get on with, in it, well, then you've got a career ahead of you. And if you decide you don't like something that you've tried, great. At least you tried it. Knock it off the list and start again. And thank you for joining me for this week's Coffee with Colin. I hope and I trust that you got something from it. If you've stumbled across it for the first time and you've enjoyed it and you'd like more of this type of stuff, go to our homepage, colinobrienmotivation.com, leave me your details and we'll make sure we get you a link like this every week or so. If, it's, if you've enjoyed what you heard and you think somebody else would benefit, well then feel free to pass the link on to them. I'd very much appreciate that. And of course, if you'd like to leave me a comment, go to the bottom of the blog and do so. Please consider what's been shared here today and apply it into your thinking for the next week or so. And then, most importantly, please come back next week and let's share a coffee together. And I'll share another snippet from the book, Feeding Johnny, and uh, share the lesson contained therein and see where it leads both of us. In the meantime, have a great week. Get some good coffee, get some rest, get organized for the year ahead, get stuck in and try something different. Top class. Love my coffee. Bye for now.